Engineering dates back to as far as humans have ever existed. From the prehistoric era of stone tools, to ancient civilizations of pyramids, to the middle ages of Roman infrastructure, and to the industrial revolutions of engines and electricity. All the way to now where engineers can achieve anything imaginable. We're exploring outer space, pioneering robotic automation, and building breathtaking skyscrapers. Engineering itself has become stronger than ever, yet modern engineering students feel more misery in purpose. They cheat on their assignments just to scrape by, they plagiarize off of their friends like weaklings, and lack the drive to determine what they're gonna do after university. What a fucking tragedy it is, therefore it is our duty to make a shift in our mindset. Because the unavoidable truth is that we are the engineers of tomorrow. About two years ago when I was a second year engineering student, there was this one class which a lot of the students around me saw was difficult and really abstract to understand. It was basically an introduction to systems and controls and the class was called System Dynamics. I was learning stuff like unit step function, Laplace transform, Fourier transform. If you're an early year engineering student, let me ask you, what do you think all of this means? What do you think all of this content is about? What do you think the applications of this theoretical knowledge could tie into? And I was having those exact same thoughts. I was like, yo, this is so abstract. I've never seen any type of math like this. So I went to the professor of this class's office hours and I went to ask him, what is this all about? What, what kind of applications does this uh, lead to in the engineering industry. And when I first asked him this question, he didn't really answer my question. He kind of went on tangents, tangents, tangents. He just kept talking and talking, yapping, yapping. And in the middle, I asked him again, I was like, okay, so like, is there any practical application or example that you could give me to what this unit step function uh, really means? And then he kept going on tangents, 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 tangents. And I was like, I was getting tired at this point because it's been like half an hour of him just going on tangents. And then I asked him one last time, what's the applications of the content that I'm learning in your class right now? And you know what he said? He said, don't worry about it for now. Just learn the course content and it'll all make sense later. And that was a bullshit answer. That was a bullshit waste of time. A waste of my precious time as an engineering student. All I wanted to know was what I was learning and the practical use of this theoretical knowledge. But he didn't even provide me that. I just listened to him ramble for like half an hour. Now I'm not saying all of this stuff like Fourier transform is not useful, but I'm just saying I wanna know why it was useful. That's what I wanted to know, that's all. But the answer he gave me was so plain. And if I followed his advice of just like, learn the concepts and memorize the concepts that I teach you, then I would literally be wiring my brain to think like a student. And let me ask you a question. Why did we go to university? Did we go to university to become a student? No, we went to university so we could become engineers. And engineers are people who think ahead of time, not just think of the now and like, okay, I'll just do this one task and then I'll worry about it later. No, engineers think ahead. I was thinking like an engineer thinking, okay, what kind of practical use could I use this theoretical knowledge for? That's the mindset of an engineer, but the mindset of a student is someone who thinks, okay, I'll just memorize this right now. Well, I'll hand my assignments and I'll finish my exams. That's not what an engineer does in the engineering industry. So what I'm trying to say here is that it's because teachers sometimes fail to explain the usefulness of a subject that engineering students find that subject useless. And then all the other engineering students start to cheat and then they take shortcuts and then they fail to learn the concept, which might actually be a really useful skill for them in the future. The one thing that I want you to remember is the core reason that most of the engineering students around you are miserable, not purposeful, is because of the conditioning of your classes. You just keep studying and studying and studying and studying to the point where engineering only means assignments and exams to you. Of course, the theoretical knowledge that you learn in school is important, but the practical knowledge of building is also important. It's a mixture of theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge that makes a great engineer. I want you to take one action step either right now or after this video is over. And that is to define the clear purpose that you're meant to serve as an engineer. And the first part of your purpose is defining the role you want to work in in any given engineering industry. It could be project management, it could be mechanical design, it could be um, hardware engineering, it could be controls engineering, 
What are you good at in engineering? What classes did you really enjoy? If you were good at your first CAD class, then look into mechanical design. If you're a really good leader in group projects, then look into becoming a project manager. Okay, so once you've got your first half of your purpose defined, which is your role, now we gotta look at the second half of your purpose, which is the industry that you wanna work in. And the way that you're gonna determine this is to answer, what impact do you wanna have in this world? Do you wanna to contribute to the reversal of climate change? and look into environmental engineering or sustainable engineering industries. Do you wanna be a pioneer of space exploration? Then look into the aerospace industry. Do you wanna be someone who contributes to saving human lives? Then look into biomedical engineering or look into the medical engineering field. There's the automotive industry, motorsports industry, marine industry, power industry, so many industries out there that you can choose from. So just choose which one calls to you inside of your heart. And now once you're at the point that you know your purpose as an engineering student and you define that clearly, I'm assuming that you have by now or you will after watching this video, when you define that engineering purpose, then everything falls into place. Because the first baseline level ex of experience is projects. And these projects helps you um, impress recruiters for the engineering industry once you try to look for an internship. And then once you get this internship, that internship is gonna help you get your dream career. And that dream career is gonna help you fulfill your purpose as an engineer, the one that you just defined. But right now I'm assuming you're an engineering student and you must start with projects. You might be asking me, which projects? Which projects should I make? Do the projects which aligns with your desired industry. So if you wanna become an automotive engineer, then make projects like gearboxes, make projects like rotary engine models, make projects like inline three engine models, V8 engine models. And then the skills that you should use to make these projects should align with the specific role that you defined. So if you wanna become a mechanical design engineer, then it's pretty clear that you're gonna to wanna to use some skills like CAD, FEA. Now I understand that it could get a bit complicated when trying to define which projects you should make. So if you really do need the help, then I recommend that you click the link in the description, which leads to the program where I teach you through calls and through courses how to develop the right portfolio of the right projects. So go check it out if you have to. The term pretengineers is a term that I recently came up with, which is someone who cheats throughout university. They plagiarize off of their friends. They take online exams as an opportunity to cheat and they abuse AI to solve all of their work for them. Now, as a disclaimer, AI can be used as a tool. I know that, okay? So don't fucking roast me in the comments saying, oh, AI can be used as a tool. I know it can, but I'm saying that you shouldn't abuse it so that you could cheat throughout university and act without integrity. AI has a time and place, but your exams are not one of them, okay? When pretensioners cheat and do all of these uh, things that have no integrity within it, they take away that fulfillment of achieving something that felt impossible. And that's one of the most beautiful things that you can do as an engineer. Have an amazing feat and solve something that everyone thought that you wouldn't be able to solve. And on the surface, pretend engineers will respond to my message right now. They'll say, oh yeah, it's not, it's not a big deal. I could cheat throughout university. It, it's not a big deal at all. But deep down, deep down in their fucking hearts, they know that they're frauds. They know that they took the easy way out. They know that they're weaklings who depends on a robot to do their work for them. And this is a bit of a side tangent, but you need to outperform them. Because those motherfuckers, they're gonna take shortcuts when they're looking for internships as well. And who's gonna be looking for internships also? You are. You're gonna be competing against them in the same candidate pool. They might be looking for you to secure your dream internship that you wanna work in. And if you don't fucking work your ass off to make all of these projects and develop the baseline level of experience, then they're gonna take your position. And do you really fucking want that? I don't think so. And it's not only important that you outperform them so that they don't just take your spot, but it's also important that you outperform them because whichever company that they join, they're gonna make that company worse just by being there because they lied on their resume, lied on the interviews, lied in their cover letters, and the recruiters believed it. But then once these pretend engineers actually work and uh, do the CAD work or do the um, electronics work, the recruit is gonna see that they're nothing but a fraud. And in the worst case scenario, pretend engineers will again take shortcuts like they did in university by neglecting maintenance in order to save costs. And then that negligence of safety ends up taking innocent 
lives. It has happened many, many times before. The Gambira Bridge, the Liari Building, the Bhopal Gas Tragedy. All of these incidents have caused innocent lives to be taken, and it could have all been avoided if the engineers who were working in that industry wasn't pert engineers. So in conclusion, the main reason that all the engineering students are around you are miserable is first of all, the conditioning of your courses. The professors tell you just to memorize uh, all of this theoretical knowledge and not worry about the practical applications. Absolute bullshit. Two, they have no direction for which field they want to go towards or which role they want to work in after graduation. And lastly, reason three, cheating. Pretend engineers know deep, deep down inside that they're only frauds and they didn't earn their career and they didn't earn their degree. And if you've watched up to this point, I just know that you're not part of this cohort. You are a purposeful engineer. You know that engineering is meant for you. And I want you to take into consideration what I've said in this video. I want you to make projects. I want you to deprioritize your classes and de-essentialize these classes in order to pursue the actual reason that you're in university, engineering. And lastly, I don't want you to cheat at all, no matter how hard it gets. We all know engineering is supposed to be hard. Every engineer who has came before us has faced difficulty. We're all going to face difficulty. Check out my program link down in the description if you're interested, and I'll see you next time.